Hey, sportsman John Bergsma. Hey, this week's video fishing report live from Babbitt Sports Center here in Muskegon, Michigan. Now, we've got five awesome reports. We've got, we're going to start the day with fall brawl report number three from here on Ohio. Now, we're coming off a big week of wind, but we still got some valuable information for you. Then we're going to come around the corner back to Lake St. Clair. We're going to talk about something that not a lot of people talk about, and that's the fall panfish opportunities, that's bluegill, bass, and crappies in the marinas that have now pulled all of their boats, and all of these dock slips are exposed with all the poles and structures that they have, some really great pan fishing going on in those marinas. Then we're gonna slide across the state right here to Muskegon, Michigan. We're gonna talk about the bite that's going on on Muskegon Lake and White Lake for perch and the upcoming months for walleye. We're gonna slide north. We're gonna be in Ludington and Manistee for the Pier Marquette River, the Manistee River systems. Steelhead are coming pouring in now out of the lake. We've had a lot of cold weather. We've got a lot of rain last week. That has triggered a huge push of fresh fish. We're gonna end the day on the east side in Taos, uh, north actually to Oscoda, and it's gonna be the Osabo River with Captain Gene Curvin. Same situation, tons of steel. He's coming into the Osabo River. Fishing's fantastic. Hey, five great reports here from Babbitt Sports Center in Muskegon, Michigan. So hey, fall brawl report number three coming to you from Huron, Ohio and Captain Jason Haar from Loaded Rod Charters. And just a front tip, if you're looking to get out in the fall brawl and you're in the slam and in the brawl, give Jason a call. He's got some open dates. There's gonna be some really good weather coming and some awesome fishing now for his report. Now, he, in spite of the big waves, went out on Friday and Saturday. Now on Friday, he had a very good day. Where did he find some fish? Between Cedar Point and Marblehead. So even though he put in at uh, Huron, he started running back towards the west and found some clean enough water to fish. And that's really Captain Jason's tip to everybody coming off this big blow. Look around, take a satellite, look at the lake, try to pick the areas of the lake that have got some fishable water. I gotta believe it's gonna probably settle out late this week and become fishable. So how was Jason catching his fish? Well, he was targeting that 18 foot zone. So he was running, you know, big crankbaits that would dive 18 feet down. And he was all using an old charter captain's trick and that is really dark crankbaits. So why a really dark prank crankbait in dirty water? because believe it or not, blacks and purples show up the best, way better than white in dirty water. Those darker crankbaits have a really strong profile in dirty water and it helps the walleyes catch them. The other thing Jason was doing was even though you don't have to because of water temperature, he was slowing his speed down, one five, one six, one seven, because it was just letting the bait be in front of the fish just a little bit longer rather than ripping by at two miles an hour. Certainly water temperature on nice days and cleaner water still allowing you to go two to two two. But when you get a dirty water circumstance, that's a really good tip. Slow your presentation down and go to darker baits like dark purples and black or a white woodpecker um, wonder bread with a black head, that contrast can be a really good trigger point. So a couple of great tips from Jason. Fish seem to be really locked in at that 18 to 20 foot down mark. If you're looking for just four to five pound eaters, obviously as fish come in, they can also uh, move up. Big fish will move up from the deeper water into that feeding zone. So it really just seems like that feeding zone right now is 17 to 20 down. So pick your crankbaits out. Another great choice if you're fishing there on Huron is a bait that I'm gonna really be putting to the test next week, and that's the Big Reaper. It's a deep diving crankbait by Walleye Nation Creation. I've got a little box of them out to the custom painters. The folks at JT and the folks at Dom Cow Outdoors are both painting me six of their favorite colors. I don't even know what colors they are. I just sent the box up to Paul and said, hey, Paul from JT Customs, paint me up your six best-selling colors, two of each, and the same over at Dave Domka at Domka Outdoors down in Monroe. 
He's got a great custom painting business as well. So those two custom painters are gonna be sending me back my reapers. I should have them here within a week. And we're gonna put those baits in the water and catch a bunch of fish and show you some great pictures from our trip because we're headed down to Huron, Ohio this coming Saturday. This is our BH-100V vertical beverage holder designed to go in our tree. Same thing, got a hole in the side, screw goes in here, tightens up into our slot into our trees. Can get be adjustable anywhere up and down this we want, on this side, this side, or this side, but normally put it on the front side or the inside slot, depending on what else we have going in our tree. And then also, uh, we did take and had a popular, popular request by all of our clients over all the years. We took in and put in a full plate in the bottom side of our beverage holders now. So a lot of guys wanted to be able to drop stuff in here besides the bottom of water and they wanted to put uh, tool caddies inside here or hold a, a spin doctor or something for fishing out of here that we want and so we made it so you could drop some stuff in there and not lose it through instead of just having our pin in there. So updated version for 2020 on our BH100V, our vertical beverage holder for our trees. So next stop, Lake St. Clair. Hey, Nick Garantakis and Anthony Cappuccioni are great young fishermen over in the Lake St. Clair region. These guys have been giving me great photos and great information all year long. So shout out to Nick on this week's video fishing report because he's been pounding really nice bluegills, crappie, and even a random largemouth bass by fishing marina docks as these marinas empty out of their boats. So. What's the circumstance? Well, obviously you got super cold weather, so all of these marinas are pulling their boats, getting them in storage, wrapping them, which exposes all of the marina docks and the substructures of these marinas, which are all, as you know, most of them are stabilized by great big poles. Whether they're walmanized lumber or whether they're steel, what they are to the fish is structure. And so Nick's working these quickly He's not spending tons of time because it's hit or miss. I mean, you're gonna throw just like in real life, you're gonna have 90% of the water with no fish and 10% of the water with a lot of fish. The same is true. These fish are gonna move in packs through these marinas and they're gonna be working and you gotta find the docks that are active when you're there. So you're gonna wanna work through them. So here's the two basic presentations to working these docks. You're gonna either fish them and I would suggest you do both, meaning two guys in the boat, one guy's flipping a bobber with a, a weighted perch pounder with live emeralds on it. And most of these fish are holding, according to Nick, on docks that are about eight to 10 feet in water depth and they're fishing halfway down. So maybe four feet down and eight, 10, 12 feet. Even that's subjective to day to day. Some days they might be on poles that are in 10 to 12. Some days they might be in eight to 10. You've really get, just got to work around until you start catching a few fish and then make close notes to yourself of what depth the poles were in on the ones you do catch fish on. Then you can start to target those and move quicker through the marinas. But, uh, a bobber, a slip bobber with perch pounders and emeralds is a great way to fish. Why? Because it's solid. You can set that thing four foot and flip it and let it hang by a dock. And then you can also, you know, lay the rod down, pick up your casting rod, and then just throw a light tungsten with a small plastic. Little plastics that roadside minnows makes are a great, you know, a great little offering. Make sure you're Again, looking at the water you're dealing with in the marinas, it should be reasonably clear. So you should be able to fish normal colors that crappie like, like pinks and chartreuses and greens, things like that. That's gonna trigger lots of bites. And again, remember to flip and count those things down. You know, you can let that tungsten sink all the way to the bottom and pop it back to check for deep fish. You can cast it out, count it down one, two, three, and pop it a couple times and slow reel it in to check for mid-depth fish. So you can do a lot of different things, but try this marina dock system here in the fall uh, once the boats are out. It's a really effective way to catch a lot of great panfish there on Lake St. Clair. Wave Pro high performance boat pedestals eliminate bottoming out and back jarring impacts. Now available the 2.0 version and slider seat hubs. The best in air shock technology provides a controlled return to keep you on your seat. Fast and easy to install with permanent mounts or movable hubs for quick and easy seat placement in 10 to 16 inch models. 
WavePro, high performance boat pedestals, best ride on the water. Online at waveproshock.com. So, hey guys, we mentioned to you we're at Babbitt Sports Center here in Muskegon, and this report is a Muskegon report. We've got a lot of really good reports starting to flood in all of a sudden of guys starting to really pound on some really nice perch and early season walleye there on Muskegon Lakes and White Lake as well. So, what's the bite? What's going on right now? Well, again, most of the guys that fish for perch in inland lakes are fishing straight over the side of the boat with perch pounders, no different here. Uh, Paul Elwell, a friend of the show, sent me a really nice bucket of perch. You'll see that picture come over the screen. Uh, that was Paul's catch for Saturday. And uh, he did really, really well on brightly colored perch pounders and emeralds right below the boat. The key to what Paul was doing it was fishing reasonably shallow, so 10 to 15 foot weed edges. Uh, cruising along the weed edges, you know me, I'm a Garmin guy, so that means I'm gonna have my live scope on looking forward and I'm gonna be isolating uh, from the weed edge to the out and I'm gonna be finding activity or moving random fish. At that point, if you're moving into the wind as you always should be with your bow mount, then you can go ahead and spot lock and creep forward with the little five foot forward every time, creep forward to those fish and you can either pitch a bobber with a pounder below it or you can get right over top of them. Sometimes in that 10 to 15 foot of water, it's not a bad idea to have a bobber or two rigged up because sometimes they can be spooky. So flipping a bobber on a, a slip bobber with a perch pounder, and this is stuff that a lot of people don't talk about, but listen guys, what's the difference of putting a hook and a sinker on versus putting a bottom weighted perch pounder below your bobber? You know, a slightly bigger bobber, uh, just a little bit because you're still only going to use a double split shot when you're in that shallow water. Just enough to get that pounder to go down and hold with a straight line. Same thing. Bobber takes that under, boom, you're on to, onto the races. And the reason I like using a perch pounder rather than just a hook and a sinker is, again, you double up your chances of getting bit. You have two hooks. And secondly, you're adding color and flash down there with a live emerald. A uh, couple tips. Uh, this presentation with a bobber is the one time I would say don't lip hook the perch pounder onto the emerald. I'd go ahead and hook that behind the dorsal into the meat of the minnow and let the minnow swim a little bit. That really seems to get a lot more bites. You can hook them with two hooks both ways and see which one works best for you. But you get a lot of bites when you have that dorsal hooked minnow below a bobber. So Muskegon Lake, White Lake, shallow water, transition from weeds to clean right now for great big perch, and you're probably gonna st stumble into some really nice smallmouth bass as well as walleye. Walleye trolling, we'll be back and talk about in two weeks. Don't spend another season breaking your back using five gallon gas cans to fuel your toys. The FlowFast portable fluid transfer system is your solution. A great tool for fueling your ATVs, snowmobile, boat, garden tractor, and more, FlowFast eliminates gas sloshing on you and your machines, plus works in reverse to pull unused fuel from your equipment at the end of each season. The pump transfers from container to container in seconds and moves up to eight gallons a minute. Log on to FlowFast.com for a dealer near you. So we got some really good uh, steelhead action going on north of, Man of the Muskegon area up in Ludington on the Pier Marquette River system as well as Manistee in the Manistee River system. So this isn't anything new. All you guys who love steelhead fishing knew this was gonna happen. You get the combination of really cold weather and cold nights with wind and rain. All of those three things combined mean temperatures in the, in the rivers are dropping quickly and you're getting wind, which keeps people, which creates a situation where those steelhead are really motivated because of the rain and the flow in the rivers to go ahead and leave the pier areas and to head on up. And you're gonna have fresh runs of fish uh, for the next month or two, I would think. Um, here's the thing, don't, don't abandon the shoreline or the pier fishing. That's actually just getting going. And one of the reasons is, is because Steelhead don't all come into the river like snap a finger and every single steelhead go, oh, it's time to spawn and to eat king salmon eggs. They don't think that way. Steelhead don't spawn until the spring, okay? 
So you're gonna have different waves of fish come through for the next month or so. So November pier fishing and, and fishing right around the pier heads is gonna remain good with small boats. That's gonna be a bite that we're gonna talk about all the way to Thanksgiving. So don't abandon that, but also know that there is a lot of fresh fish coming into the river. So if you're not already hooked up with a guide, now is the time to call. Now, if you do the fishing yourself, whether it's walking shorelines or you have a river rig, uh, I would say right now you're gonna try to get those fish in the same areas that the kings would spawn because obviously they're there to eat the eggs. So deep runs and cuts on cut banks, under structure, uh, lay downs, things like that. You're gonna be wanting to float your beads and your spawn above the structure and come into it. Uh, trying to find the deepest cuts and turns in the river. You know, again, these fish aren't spawning, they're here speeding. So they're gonna be in a different location of the stream. If they were spawning, I would tell you to go up on the gravel flats and banks, you know, and, and fish there. But these fish are just newly here. All of the salmon eggs are tumbling down. So you're gonna to wanna to fish where those eggs tend to stop and hold up and that's in the deep cuts, okay? So you can do it a number of different ways, but it seems to me that the best re way to do it right now is with center pins or open uh, reels, floating bobbers down into the structure on the deep cuts or spawn. Either way, beads are spawn right now under bobbers. Make loading and unloading your boat easy with the Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch. Load with ease, simply drive on the trailer and the Dorado will automatically latch to your bow eye. A hard plastic liner protects your boat. For launching, back your boat in, pull the release lever and away you go. For roller or bunk trailers, the Dorado is quick and easy to install and works with most V-Hull boats. Spend less time at the landing and more time fishing. The Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch, online at doradoproducts.com. So hey guys, last stop of the day, it's another river stop, but this is a completely different presentation that Captain Gene Curvin up there at Calypso Sport Fishing on the Osabo River out of Escoda is running. And that's because right now uh, he seems to think, and, and, it's, and he's correct, that the fish are biting crankbaits and he's been having great success on the deep runs on the Osabo catching really nice cromers. So how's he doing it? He's been back backdropping and fishing with gold uh, mag warts, mag lips, uh, which is uh, Yakima bait makes them. Gold and gold and orange have been the best. Now this is a traditional presentation that Gene likes to do this time of year. He gets a lot of bites off of it. You get a lot of hookups, you catch a lot of fish. Gotta remember, these are the first fish of the year. The water's still warmer than it would be in the dead winter. So these fish are pretty active and they're pretty aggressive. So this crankbait bite is a great way to catch these fish. Um, so if you're looking for something unique, the Osabo River is just flat out possibly one of the most beautiful rivers anywhere in the whole United States, much less Michigan. And it has some extraordinary small uh, 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 steelhead fishing. So, and this doesn't seem to get hit for whatever reason, as much as Ludington Manistee. So a trip out with Gene will not only show you some awesome scenery, but it'll show you great numbers of fish and you'll get to experience the small town of Tawas. And if you're looking for to get a room, they've got lots of accommodations this time of year. It's not an expensive trip. And Gene is an awesome guy who's been fishing that stretch of river for decades. He'll put you on fish and get you out into a great scenery. So check it out, Calypso Sport Fishing Charter on the Osabo River for steelhead early season. So guys, we said we're here at Babbitt Sports Center. We're here in front of a beautiful Yamaha. I think this is a side-by-side -side four seater. And what we've got is we've got a showroom filled with product, which isn't normal, but here's the catch. That showroom's filled with product, but this is pretty much all they got. So if you're looking to buy something right now, you gotta get in here and get what they got. And they've got some good stuff. But here's the real point of what we're talking about. You've heard on the news, whether it's you know, whether it's meat or corn or whatever, the supply chain is so messed up right now that this is gonna be an issue going into 2022. It's not gonna be fixed next May. Don't expect dealers like Babbitt's 
who are the biggest handlers in the state of ATVs and four wheelers and snowmobiles and motorcycles, you name it. Normally Babbitt's has got it. Well, right now Babbitt's needs you in here to order this product because that's the only way you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it if you come down here this fall, lay your money on the table, say I want that one right there. If you're looking for a Wave Runner next June, you better be into Babbitt's in November or you are not gonna get it. That's just the reality of the circumstance. I can't be any more plain. You've gotta get here. You've got to order that product. You've been warned. If you're looking for an ATV, a motorcycle for next summer, a wave runner, whatever it is you're looking for, come now because if you don't come now, you won't be having fun next June, July, and August with it. So the supply chain issues may correct at the end of next year. Hey, we hope they do. But in the meantime, get on down to Babbitt's. The other thing they got is if you're stuck because you go, oh, you know what, John, I don't want to order it now. I'll wait till spring. Well, you're going to be riding what you've got next spring because that's the way it is. But what they do offer you is an awesome service department. Babbitt's can take the machine you got. They can go through it. They can get another year out of it for you if that's the way it has to be. But either way, whether it's to get great service on your unit to get another year out of it or to come down here and put a deposit, Babbitt's, Muskegon, right here on the highway, get on down here, talk to one of the salespeople, get your deposit in and be happy next summer rather than saying, ah, oh, I should have done it. You know what? Come on down. They're here to serve you. They're the biggest in Michigan. Stay tuned for more from Babbitt's. We'll be back here in a couple weeks. Why? Because we're talking Muskegon Lake Walleye.